Hello and welcome to my review of License to Kill. Uh, obviously, you know my uh, I've mentioned in several reviews about what License to Kill means to me and as a film, my opinion of it. But I'm just gonna probably this is probably gonna be about half an hour long because it's fucking License to Kill. Shit. Anywho, uh, License to Kill is the 16th film in the James Bond franchise. Um, I mean, we made it to my favorite one in the entire franchise. Best of the best, top of its class, best James Bond film ever made, in my opinion. Uh, License to Kill is, in fact, a masterpiece. I don't know if you've me because I've said this before in the past, but it is. Uh, it, it has one of the best villains of the entire franchise. Franz, Franz, Franz Sanchez played perfectly by Robert Darby. And I just think Sanchez as a character is just amazing and awesome. And he's just one of the best. Like, he's a very underrated villain. Although I do realise that when you look at the Tim's two films... <coughs> When you look at, I pardon me. When you look at Tim's two films, *Living Daylights* and *License to Kill*, *License to Kill* has the superior villain. Uh, you could say the superior story, but I have obviously grown more of a enjoyment more. So not that I didn't like *License* uh, *Living Daylights*, but my appreciateness has just jumped up a billion levels because of stuff like John Barry's incredible piece *Ice Chase* from the school. But that's *Living Daylights*. *License to Kill*. Uh, it just the villain in Sanchez is so good. He is played perfectly by Robert Darby. He's, he's absolutely brilliant. I think all his scenes are very well done. He's like a very serious tone villain for a very serious tone film, and it, and it really helps to elevate his character to another level, the, the personal. Because with, with a lot of the other villains in the franchise, there isn't uh, a, 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 as, a, a, as a personal connection as there is between Bond and Sanchez, you know, because, you know, it was Felix's wedding at the beginning of the film. They caught Sanchez, and then Sanchez then actually almost a uh, game ended, <laughs> killed Felix's wife, main Felix. So there's such a there's a really personal connection between Fran Sanchez and and Bond, and I love the way that Bond goes about taking him down instead of doing what he does most of the films, taking him down normally, following the plan and stuff. He takes him down from the inside. He goes in to be part of his his group, and and he makes Fran, and he makes Sanchez really wary of everyone in his organisation. Obviously, he, due to what Bond tells him, and he actually Bond does a clever thing because there's a scene in the film where Loopy uh, tells where Bond, Bond and Sanchez and Loopy are in the same room. Bond's just woken up. Sanchez is offering him tea, and then Bond goes to sit down with Loopy while Sanchez goes and sorts something out. And Loopy says, "Crest is coming into uh, coming into uh, Isthmus City tonight." Uh, and Sanchez is going to go and see him, and or we might recognise him. And then Bond says, "Perfect." And then Sanchez comes and sits down, and then Bond, using the information he's just been told, uh, obviously Sanchez asked him, "Do you know anything about the people who killed me, who tried to kill me?" Uh, which was actually Bond, but you know Sanchez didn't know that yet. And then Bond, using his big brain, uses the information just given to him by Loopy and says, "Only that he, only that he was going to be paid. Uh, the person was going to be paid a great deal of money by someone coming into Isthmus City tonight." Which, of course, when you look at the facts, it's Crest. So, uh, you know, Sanchez then realises that maybe Crest is bruh, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Crest gets game-ended because Bond sets it up by planting the money in the dialogue chamber thing, and then he explodes. Uh, Fran Sanchez gets uh, Crest's head completely exploded, and it's brilliant. And then, and then towards the end of the film, you also see um, in some scenes, particularly in the Institute, Sanchez is very wary of Perez touches his shoulder and then Sanchez just pushes him off to the side and he's looking to the side and you can clearly tell Sanchez has been made Bond's plan to sort of get him, to break him down from the inside, clearly working because he's very wary of everyone in his organisation at that point of the, um, at that point which is just fun, but uh, it's just, Sanchez is so good and then there's obviously a bit also where he goes, he finds Hella and then Braun's there and Braun gives him a stone, like just looks over at him and then Sanchez looks of him too but obviously quite disturbed by what's to happen but yeah um i think sanchez is brilliant and it's great to have him in uh have him in this film and you know it's just brilliantly fun yeah he's just one of the best. he's not my favorite and that would probably be just due to performance wise it'd be max zoe in interview to a kill but but sanchez here is just brilliant which is fun um Yeah, again, like I said, I'm just reading off of the review here. You clearly, you clearly tell he doesn't trust anyone anymore. But uh, anyway, on to your boy Q. Q, character in this film, you know, Desmond Rowan, has his biggest role in this film. And it's brilliant to see him be a field agent for once. Because most of the times, in the most of the films, I mean, sure, he's been like a semi-field agent. But he's gone out, he was in Japan for, you know, twice. He was in um, um, uh, the Bahamas for Vulnerable and other times. 
but he's not actually done any field work. He's just been there to equip Bond in the field, which is fun. But yeah, he literally just there to equip Bond in the field. Whereas here, he 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 also technically, if you want to be super super epic, Q goes rogue in this film. He he he. Well, I mean, obviously through the guidance of Money Penny, um, he goes rogue in the film and he tells Money Penny that um. He tells Money Penny, well, Money Penny tells him that Bond's missing. Go, he's in this place. So yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. So he li he literally tells Sanchez that. Uh, well, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna go off track it. He t uh, Money Penny sends for Cuba. It's the same way he calls. Where he calls Kubot, where she calls Kubot and says, can, can you put me through the queue, please? And then we don't see the rest of it, but we, obviously what we are to assume is that she told Q that Bond was in Istema City, because because uh, Emma just told her that, so she tells Q that Bond, <clears throat> Bond's in Istema City. She sends uh, Q out to Istema City to find Bond. She, she finds Bond and uh, Beans. Uh, <laughs> then, yeah, he, he finds Bond and Q's hers up in Bond's hotel room and... Uh, Bond almost kills Q in a funny in a funny meme. But uh, yeah, Q has a big role in this film, and I'm a big fan of Q having such a big role in this film. And it's good to see Q as a character, one I've always loved. I think this movie went in is such a brilliant presence on screen, and I think to have him have the, his biggest his biggest role in in my personal favorite Bond film is just great to see. Um. Uh, for the girls, we have the wonderful Carrie Lowell as Pam Bouvier, which is a very more uh, American-style tough girl character who isn't, isn't a bit, but never has been one of them. Really, probably one of the more tougher Bond girls that we've seen it for a while. I mean, up there with Natalia from the following film, which I have to admit, do with you, for God knows, it's not very good because I was in the middle of a big fuck off wow with someone. Uh, so yeah, I didn't have uh, my full attention given to God and it was very late at night, and I just fucking shit on that review so i'm gonna probably come for golden eye review i'm gonna completely fucking improvise that one because um there's literally barely any text to uh <laughs> we forgot it, which is the same because golden Knight is a banging film uh do 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 no 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 anyway and we also have the literally incredible hot lisa soto as loopy and more who's an interesting character but i mean she doesn't have the most she's not a bimbo and she's certainly not a weak character she, she's just sort of there much like magda in octopus she's not really either one of them but she is quite obviously the kept woman but 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 not not in, in as bad a way as and as andreas anders is in the man with the golden gun she doesn't desperately want out i mean she's tried to get out but it's like when she goes back to being with sanchez she doesn't desperately want out that particular she's not as desperate as say you know, as Anders was in Golden Gun, which is fun. But yeah, he does have a bit. I just feel like Loopy is 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 a cool character. That's fun. But yeah, we are obviously moving on. To a, like, a big, big, big up, big mention to the uh, costume designer for License to Kill. Because their work, not so much Bond, Bond's costumes is just a bit fucking weird. But uh, the costume designer for uh, Sanchez and Loopy, their, their, their outfits are just on point. They're really good. I love, my favourite outfit is when Sanchez is wearing the black, like, hoodie, sort of, not hoodie, but, you know, black overcoat. And he's got a pink shirt, and I think that's his best outfit in the film. But he, his outfits and Loopy's outfits in this film are brilliant. So yeah, uh, big shout out to License to Kill's costume designer Jody Lynn Tillin. Big up. Uh, standout scenes include basically all of the entire fucking film. But if you want to be specific here, we have um, uh, we have the uh, pre-title sequence, which is fun. Uh, the raid on Crest Lab, the escape from the Wave Quest, the casino scenes, which are all good fun. Bond meeting Sanchez for the first time, which is brilliant. Bond waking up at Sanchez's home, which is fun, uh, Bond framing Milton Quest, and also the Quest staff. Uh, the entire finale is lots of fun as well, which is good. 
music uh, this time was by Michael Kamen of Die Hard and original X-Men fame, who delivers what is, in my opinion, the best score in the entire franchise. The score is so wonderful. I mean, the whole pre-title sequence, every single track from the pre-title sequence is just brilliant. And I think you it's really worth it. It's really weird because License to Kill is the first, and as of right now, currently only Bond film, unless you really want to be specific and count Tomorrow Never Dies, but I don't think I will. Because Tomorrow Never Dies is more score than it is uh, to have a, what I like to call a 50-50 soundtrack. Which means it's, well, if the if the soundtrack album has more than three songs sung by a singer, then it makes it a 50-50 soundtrack. And License to Kill has four, and then the rest of it's score excellence. So it has a 50-50 soundtrack, which is half sung songs and half... Uh, Half sung songs and half score songs. So other examples of this are Him and Bodyguard and uh, Shaft. The two examples I use quite regularly. And also to, to an extent Ant Man, but Ant Man doesn't have as many as those. But yeah, those examples are 50 50 soundtracks. And I think it's a shame because License to Kill has the best score. And the only way to really get the whole full score is by buying the LS Scores expanded edition of the soundtrack, which is is an unofficial release from Spain. I'll be talking more about that when we get in just a second when we get to the actual listings of the songs. But I'm happy that, the, that this, this exp, ex, uh, expanded edition release uh, exists in a full release, and it's not just me looking at, um, you know, on YouTube finding people putting rips of it up on the internet when there's actually a proper CD score release, which I'm holding in my hand here. Uh, yeah, it's got 39 tracks, so it, it's a full, uh, it's full on good score. But just to talk about this release quickly, I, I, I'm a fan of this release, but I don't like it when you're promoting license to kill and you use a piece of living daylight's fucking imagery so why the fuck would you do that that's do that pisses me off because the inner slip thing has on the back of it on the inside on the back of license to kill all of the names of people in it and stuff. but then the image above it is literally timothy dalton in the living daylights interrogating pushkin like what the fuck why that triggers me but yeah it's a good release i recommend uh the, getting any of the complete re uh those releases but we'll talk about it in a second I think that his score is brilliant. Michael Kamen is someone who unfortunately left us way too soon, and it is sad to you know have such an incredible talent leave us as quickly as he did. And he was, I mean, for me, the standout scores. Obviously, this is his best one. You've got Die Hard and Original X Men, which are other standout track and scores he's done, but he's done other ones. But yeah, um, just want to mention here uh, standout tracks include, and again, like I said, please note the track names come from the LS scores um, expanded edition of the soundtrack, which you can get from the Elite soundtrack website. And what I want to point out about these releases is they're obviously unofficial. They're obviously, you know, it's an unofficial Spanish release, so the disc looks a bit janky. But uh, overall, they are quite good. And when you look on the Elite Soundtrack website, they have expanded scores for every single film, from 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 Russia of Love all the way through to Spectre, with the exception of Living That Die, as there isn't an expanded release for Living That Die on that website. Oh, and also there isn't one for um, Dying of the Day. But there's one for World Is Not Enough, so everything for everything except for Doctor No, uh, The World Is Not Enough, and Live and Let Die. Every other film has an expanded release. I currently only have the, some of them are two discs, some of them are one disc. I currently only have the uh, Lessons to Kill one disc one. I also have ordered the Moonmaker two, uh, the Moonmaker one disc one, but that hasn't actually turned up yet, which is a shame. But I am looking forward to having Moonmaker, because it, 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 the score is not the best, but I only bought it because I spun a wheel, and it picked Moonmaker, so fuck off, <laughs> which is unfortunate, I would have loved to pick up the Daylight's expanded score, because that fucking soundtrack is PENG, but yeah, um, I'm a big fan of movie soundtracks, and the Bond soundtrack specifically, if you look over my shelf, I'm not, obviously you can't see it, but my shelf is good, it's a whole section dedicated to all to the Bond soundtracks, and I've got most of them from Doctor No all the way through to, uh, consecutively, the other one after the other, I've got it all the way through to, Oh, uh, Moonraker, and then I'm missing For Your Eyes Only, uh, A View to a Kill, and The Living Daylights, physically, and then I have, to my never, then I have this one, which is for License to Kill, to uh, Octopus, I have Octopus up there, because that's one that you can't actually, Octopus is the one soundtrack where you can't, where, so some of the soundtracks like Living Dead, so most of the soundtracks like Doctor No, Fun Shuffle, Golfing, and Thunderbolt, the early ones, and some of the late ones, uh, well, actually, the late ones, uh, have the soundtrack available to add to your library if you have like Amazon Music or Apple Music and stuff like that. And some of them, like Octopussy and uh, For Your Eyes Only, and not Octopussy, so I something like For Your Eyes Only and uh, For Your Eyes Only, A View to a Kill, and The Living Daylights. They have their soundtracks that you only have to, you have to purchase them, you can't what, listen to them on a streaming service, you have to purchase the music, and that's the only way you can actually like buy it digitally. But Octopussy is the only one that doesn't have either 
part of the streaming service or you can buy it digitally. You have to buy the CD for Octopussy, which is a shame because Octopussy, his soundtrack is fucking brilliant, but you can't purchase it digitally and you can't purchase, uh, you know, can't purchase it and you can't listen to it on the streaming service. You have to buy the CD, which is why the Octopussy was the first in that set of really CDs that I actually purchased. Before that, I had obviously acquired the World Is Not Enough 2 disc CD and the Tomorrow Never Die single disc CD from when the film first came out, which I actually saw when I was uh, in a charity shop and I was looking for this, specifically for the CDs for no apparent reason. And then I see the words Tomorrow Never Dies down the side on, on one of the things and I'm like, well, hot diggity damn fuckity woo, I have a James Bond soundtrack, let's buy that shit. So I did. But yeah, License to Kill score is absolutely brilliant. It's a shame that it's bundled in with the weaker sound, official soundtrack release, which, by the way, when they did the remastered soundtrack, you know, the 2003 re-releases where they expanded them, the only one that didn't get a release from Doctor No all the way through to Goldeneye was License to Kill. The others got fully remastered, uh, expanded scores. All of them got it, except for License to Kill, because they just didn't want to actually officially... I don't know why they didn't do it, and it made me upset, because when you look at the list of song, list of albums on the, on the back covers, they have all of them. It goes, Doctor No, Fresh of Golf, Inc. Thunder Boy, Only Twice, Manchester Secret Service, Dumbs Off, Living and Dying, The Man with the Gone and Gone, Spare Life, Me, Moon Maker, Few Eyes, Only Octopussy, A View to Be Called the Living Daylights, then it skips to Golden Eye, and then that's it. It's like, why, what? You, you had one job, and you fucked it up. What is your fucking problem? But yeah, here's the here's the track list of songs that I've enjoyed, which all of these songs are available on my SoundCloud, by the way, that I've listed. I did have the full score up there, but I had to delete some of it so I could have space for the new podcast that's now up. That's the thing I'll talk about at the end. But yeah, all of the tracks that you're about to hear me list off are available on my SoundCloud, which is in my link tree in the description, so go check them out. We have Gone Bow, so again, I'm like, I want to preface this, these track names are from the LS Scores Expanded Edition. Remember that, from the LS Scores Expanded Edition, so if you search for these on a streaming service, you won't find them. A lot of these tracks are either non-existent on the official release, or I think everything gone, everything from the beta sequence is all meshed into half of the actual scores that are on that score piece that are on that soundtrack album that you can get on Spotify, Amazon Music and stuff, are all blended into, half of it is just the pre-title music, which is fun. So a lot of the names you're going to hear for the first couple of tracks are actually, you know, track names that are available to buy. So if you search search for Sanchez in the Bahama, Funny Valentine, and uh, James and Felix drop in, those are actual names you can find of tracks on, on Spotify and that, but they won't actually be the same tracks that I'm listing here because the tracks here are significantly shorter. Because uh, obviously James and Felix drop in is an entire is an entire suite. So is uh, and then obviously license revoked is another suite. But yeah, we have uh, Gumball, Satch Radar Alert, Sanchez in the Bah Sanchez in the Bahama, Funny Valentine, I Want Sanchez Alive for a Shootout, Shark Fishing, which is the best song and it includes Michael Kamen's lovely Latin style version of the James Bond theme. Again, my personal favourite, like I've written here. James and Felix drop in, Escape from Wave Crash slash Felix's Files, Loopy Helps Bond, Dario's Death, Escape from Conflicts, Bless Your Heart, Cutting Overhead slash Bond, Escape from the Tanker, and Sanchez Face Off. Now, I, I do want to preface that I do like out of all the composers who've had a chance to actually take on the Bond theme and music, you know, that aren't John Barry, have done, have done, have all left their own imprint using the, the, the motif that is the James Bond theme, you know. Um, Martin used a very sort of rock not rock, but, you know, like, drum, you know what I mean, very Beatles-inspired version of the theme, you know, new, 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 new. I can't even do it, because it's, it's not possible, but, you know, you have uh, Hamish's swinging 70s version, you have Conti's uh, upbeat 80s version in several tracks for that album, and then you obviously have Michael Kamen, who uh, who chooses to, much like the other ones, as well as having his own, his own version of the theme being the license revoked, well, what is commonly that that motif, that bit that is in that track, is common commonly referred to as license revoked. But I saw that's called it shark fishing. Because that's what I've got on this album. But what he does is he also weaves in certain uh, cues, certain parts of the Bond theme's actual you know structure into it, like slow down sometimes. Like, like sometimes in the score, there's da na 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 slow down slightly, which I really think is really cool, and I want to add preface to that, that that's actually a really cool thing, which is fun, and I think that's really, really good to see someone actually doing that, and I think License to Kill stands as a very, very important film in the entire franchise, and I really think uh, it's a very underrated film, and a lot of people, I, I, I'm happy to see that a lot of people are saying Dalton is underrated, License to Kill is very underrated, License to Kill, sorry, uh, Living Dallas is one that people realise is actually really quite good, but License to Kill was incredibly underrated, and it has been for a long time, and uh, I'm good to see that it's getting its comeuppance, like Majesty's, I do obviously think License to Kill is superior, but it, it's the dark, gritty thriller that, that, that Fleming wrote, if there's any film that's close to getting to Fleming's 
original novels as humanly possible. It's licensed to kill. Also, the one, but in terms of actually being close to the character and what we've seen across all of the novels, and that's licensed to kill. If you want one, one that's completely accurate to, to the novel it's based off of, well, that's on a Majesty's Secret Service in, in, in a nutshell, but one, the one that's closest to recreating Fleming's original character in a new way, but still having it much, much, much retain all of the elements from Fleming's novel, then you're looking no further than License to the Kill. It's a, it's a it's an amazing film, I think. Everyone should watch it. It is one of my favourite films of all time. That is a fact mundo. And I think that you, you, people really need to appreciate how actually good this film is. Like, it's really, really... I think that, you know, as much as I know, a lot of people believe GoldenEye is a superior film. And I, I, I enjoy watching GoldenEye, but I just can watch License to Kill over and over and over and over and over again. But yeah. This has been my review of License to Kill, the 16th film in the James Bond franchise. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a really long one because I'm just looking at the times now and I'm currently at 21 minutes. So this is the longest review of my channel and I'm happy that it is License to Kill. But just a few little tidbits to let you know on the way out. We have, uh, obviously I have my link tree in the description. Click that, it's got all my stuff. But just a few new projects that I've been starting, you could say. We've obviously got the continuing of the James Bond review series, which will continue all the way through to Spectre. And then after that, I'm going to upload a new Time Slide trailer compilation, which I've got, which is currently on a list, uh, private on my channel. And I will relist that once the Spectre reviews come out on, at, at the same day. Um, then after the Bond films, instead of, I, I know I originally said I was going to do Mission Impossible, but now I've moved on to doing the Marvel Cinematic Universe film. So we're going to do Iron Man all the way through to Marvel Studios, Spider-Man Far From Home. And if I'm feeling like it, I might do a little mini series review of WandaVision. And then hopefully once Falcon and Winter Soldier has concluded, I might talk about that series for a while. But yeah, that's what we've got. So projects coming up, finishing the Bond series, doing Mar the Marvel MCU. And then another thing I want to mention that I did previously mention previously is we've finally done the first episode of the podcast. The Dead Mean Podcast episode one is now available on my YouTube channel on Flame Fox Draws' YouTube channel, and on my SoundCloud as well. So go check that out on all those platforms. I post it everywhere as I can, Twitter, Instagram, all of that lovely stuff. Please do go check it out. We poured our heart and soul into making it as fun as we did. Um, and, you know, uh, a cute few other friends of mine are in there. Um, two of my other friends from high school were in there. We had a lot of fun. Obviously, I can't really say their YouTube names because I've not got YouTube channels, and if I say their Instagram names, it's too personal, so I'm not. But if you see my Instagram, I added them both in the post, so yeah. That's the new podcast we would do, which is a lot of fun. And um, thank you guys for tuning in. I've been very enjoying doing these movie reviews. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope you guys continue to watch them. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. I just really have enjoyed it, and hopefully once Marvel MCU has concluded, I'm going to do more. I'm just looking up my shelf now. I'm thinking of doing stuff like more, con more modern movies. Not modern movies, you know what I mean? Just more, more not moving away from series is like marvel and james bond and just doing single movies like stuber is the one i want to talk about because that movie i think is underrated uh georgia rabbit what a film uh dr sleep what a film bad boys for life i've already done a review for that on my letterbox but it's pretty shit so don't mean um elite battle angel is one i really want to talk about and i also want to talk about some older well not older i said you know 10 10 10 years older sort of uh films that i love. like like the lego movie is one i really want to talk about because the lego movie and the lego batman movie are two of my favorite animated movies ever made and i could talk about that for a while which is good fun, and hopefully maybe get around to doing a review for some of the Doctor Who episodes I like, one who, but thank you guys for watching, again, check those things in the description, my link tree, I'll post, in the description it should be, as follows, the letterbox review for this film, my link tree, link to the podcast on my channel, link to the podcast on Flame Fox's channel, Flame Fox Draws, no, sorry, link to the podcast on my channel, link to the podcast on my Spotify, link to the podcast on his channel, his, his channel link, and his link tree which is going to be a pain this is going to be a pain to edit and a pain to do everything with so thank you guys for watching uh license to kill is a masterpiece at me in the chat i don't care masterpiece it is it's very much fun i suggest everyone go watch it if you're of age my mind you the license to kill is certificate 15 in the uk uh i don't know what it is in america but if you're in the uk it's certificate 15 so please do i do not advise anyone to watch this film underage i mean despite the fact i kind of did that but that's besides the point. <laughs> if you're under the age of 15, do not watch this film as it does contain some fucking fucked up elements. If you're under 15, I don't know why you're watching this. If you do, know, because I say fuck shit a lot, so. That's fun. But yeah.
<laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your evening.